I'm trying again with this. I've got the first of the uh, depth of field pointers sitting in place. I've taken that out. I've cleaned the surfaces very carefully. I've decided that there was molybdenum paste was sitting on the, the underside of it, which may have been causing a, uh, a friction spot or a sticky spot. And this piece goes on like that. And the second pointer goes on. like that and it's not that point is not at the end of its channel correctly there I can see that and I'm not even sure that that's a hundred percent square it's probably not I'll give that a little bit more adjustment I think oh I think it, no it's, it's good I think that's probably good enough. It's very hard judging the angles of some of these components to work out whether they're actually as square as they should be. Move that over one tooth. Why is it sitting up? That spring is tucked underneath. And check the position again. It's not touching, I think we're one tooth out still. There. That looks better. I've also discovered a shim in my parts, which is not in wonderful condition, but then most of my parts are not in wonderful condition because leftovers for usually a very good reason. Usually they've come out of something that was too damaged to be put back in service and so some of the parts are not particularly good. I'm going to try this fluff under that, I don't want that. I want anything creating any drag on any of these depth of field point of arrangements otherwise they just tend to jam up. That's just the nature of the beast. I'm getting these components lined up so I can get this in the right place which would be over there somewhere. My video camera is telling me the battery is just about to die so it may or may not these functioning. They're moving better. There's still a little suspicion of a uh, tight spot at the start, but I think that's okay. I'm going to try that both with and without that shim because I suspect it had a shim and it's been never been put it back in. Let's test this once more and then I'm going to try it with the shim. It certainly moves much freer than it did before. It feels quite good. I'm going to try it with the shim now. Now, if I'm fitting a shim, let's get these components correctly in position. Make sure that the springs are not tucked under something, like that one was. This is definitely not sitting correctly. It's sitting 
slightly skew it, is it? The pointers are right, the springs are right. Now, if I'm using a sh if the shim's present, you need some way to position it in place while you're assembling the lens. And I found that the best way to do that was to start with three. You don't need four. Three will do. Three screws that have had their heads turned off them. And that will align the position of the shim while you're trying to uh, get the lens mount fitted. And if you don't have them, it's just exceptionally difficult to get the shim to go where you want it to go. That one here is a good spot. Right. The shim goes on here, and then this piece goes on over the top of the shim. Like that. And then the mount goes on. Let's make sure that that fork is lined up with that because I want to line it up with the focus, the uh, cam for the rangefinder is to couple up into that. that that went there now that went on with the shim if the shim was not meant to be present I would not have expected that mechanism to work because it would have meant that we were effectively taking up Space that things were intended to move in. So I'm just going to get two screws in here. The shim would effectively separate a couple of components to stop them rubbing on each other. And that might make a difference in the way things function. So our pointers work smoothly now and they are symmetrical. So that's a, an improvement. So I'm fairly confident that whoever had this lens apart on a previous occasion, and it may only have been apart once, was unable to get the shim to go back in position or didn't know how to position it and assembled it without the shim and we already know that the depth of field pointers were incorrectly assembled that one of them was one tooth out from where it should have been and the pointer itself had been bent most likely in an attempt to square it up so that it would look like it worked correctly. Now that's all working correctly now. That's smooth in its action. The focus is smooth in its action. The pointers, depth of field pointers move smoothly. The coupling for the diaphragm appears to move smoothly. Now perhaps not as smoothly as I would have expected. Looking to see if anything's rubbing on anything there. That would certainly see if that rubs on that shim. So there is some slight damage here. 
that was that edge that I said was damaged. And most likely it had been damaged by something, somebody sticking a screwdriver in and poking at things, I would think. And this edge here is slightly knocked in. This, this lever controls the action of the diaphragm, it controls the closing of the diaphragm. So if the diaphragm, if that's stiff, the diaphragm will not snap down into the taking aperture as quickly as it should be. And I think that's just a little bit stiff to be useful. So I'm going to just take this apart again and review the situation there. And it may be that that shim I put in was not particularly pretty when I started and I think I had it flat enough but I'm going to review that situation in case I did not have it flat enough and that it's, it may actually be rubbing on that lever. It certainly appears to be a possibility. Let's take these screws back out. Lift this off. And the shim does jam in here, that's quite normal, it catches in that case, which is why it's awkward to get in position. So I thought that was not moving as smoothly as I'd have expected. I'm just checking this to see if there's any reason that I can see why that should be the case. look to see if it looks flat in case it's bent if it's if it's got a bit of a twist in it that would make it be stiff in its operation this tab is certainly not at 90 degrees so this is bent it doesn't run dead flat if it doesn't run flat then it doesn't move correctly Here I'm just checking it on my my all-purpose block of wood to see if it lies flat. It does seem to lie flat there. I'm looking at the lens mount here now. I know that corner's pushed in, but you can tell because it's got quite a bright spot on the edge there. It's obviously folded over slightly. Let's see if I let's see if it'll roll back out. If that's pinched in, that might be pinching in on that um, piece. No, it looks okay. Let's try that thing again. It sits that way up and it sits where? Either here or on the other side, I can't tell which. These tabs here, here and the broader one here run on that channel. I'm looking particularly here where that screw head is. There's a little rough spot there. Now most likely somebody's hit that with their screwdriver when they've been doing something to that. They may, they may have left a rough spot on there. I'm just checking that. I'm running my screwdriver over it to see if it feels rough. And it doesn't. I thought it might be raised. I thought it might be rubbing on that spot. I'm just running my screwdriver over all of those surfaces. They appear good. Just 
checking the way that action feels see if I can feel any rough spots in the action I can't really, it feels ok I'll clean those surfaces in case there's a sticky spot there from old grease or anything I've already cleaned this once, but you never know, I might have missed something. This sits on top of the shim, between the mount and the shim, and the shim sits on the other piece. looking at the surface of this, there's some sort of mark there looking to see if there's a local spot that's perhaps a bit rough and you know someone, had, there's a mark there like someone had poked a screwdriver in from the side so I'm just checking to see if there's any roughness on those surfaces it doesn't appear to be Brings us back to our shim. Our shim sits this way up. This sits this way up on top of it. So I'm looking at the state of the shim, seeing if I thought I had it flat enough. Perhaps I don't. It, it was certainly a bit bent when I started off. I may have to do more work making sure that that lies dead flat. Well, I've put a lot more work into that shim, and I've got it flatter. And I'm just rubbing some graphite on here. This is just a soft lead pencil. I don't dare put anything sticky on there in the way of oil or grease. Oh, probably even molybdenum paste for that matter because of the the area and the low force that's required so quite happy with the state of that I'll just rub some pencil lead on this surface too Tabs, of course, run on the back of the case. Right, I'm going to try again. So, put my alignment screws in here to help position the shim. Later lenses didn't have a shim in that position, but they were designed not to have the shim. I would imagine that their clearances took that into account. All the lenses for the Reflex S, as far as I know, did have a shim there, and that's why I was surprised that there was no shim with this particular lens. probably should have been less surprised given that I knew somebody had been in there and had misassembled it anyway. Right, 
Let's try again. Align my fork here for the range binder coupling. It doesn't sit as flat as I'd expect it to. What's bouncing? This side seems okay. This side's lifting. Hear that shim. A bit of a twist in it. That may go away when I do it up. Or it may not. Assembly time. This must be only attempt number three or four. That's okay at the moment with no screws tightening holding it down. Let's find out what happens when I put a couple of screws in there. That's still good. Put a screw opposite. No, that moves freely now, that's good. And the adaptive field pointers are still aligned. And our focus is still smooth. Okay. I'll get the last two screws in the back of this mount. And we can probably consider this a success. Assuming there's no damage and when I... I wouldn't expect it to suddenly go tight when I put these two screws in. I suppose we shouldn't count our chickens. Let's run these screws in. Nope, that's good. Do our screws up. That is ready to have the lens capsule put back in it. Well, that was a bit of a challenge. So this, somebody's had this apart. There's a great likelihood that they did that at least to get the re-lubricate that focus mount because that does not look like the original grease. There's too much on there, and it's not graphite grease, it's just some sort of trailer wheel bearing grease. Let's get all of that out of those threads. I'm trying carefully here not to get any of it glass surfaces of course because otherwise it's a bugger getting them clean. It's cleaning up pretty well. And this piece is 
wipe that out. Judging by the two colours of grease that I'm getting out of there cleaning that, it looks to me like whoever re-lubricated it didn't bother with cleaning the components first. They simply put fresh grease on there. Which is a not the approved way of doing things. Got to get rid of the old stuff first in, in its entirety. Let's try that. That appears to run on, on there fairly smoothly. I think that's good. I'm looking at the state of these diaphragm blades and there's some marking on there but they're not sticking together and I may have mentioned before that these diaphragm blades there's five positions and there's two actually two blades at each position um, they're a bugger to reassemble and they're a little bit delicate so Discretion is the better part of valour there. If you don't need to take them out to clean them, clean them in place, clean them very carefully indeed. If you don't need to clean them, don't clean them at all. That, oh, that moves nice and smoothly, that's good. So there's our lens capsule need to put some helical grease in here and then put this all in place so I'll get to do that the helical grease I'm using is called Helimax XP optical and instrument helicoid grease and it's full of all sorts of lovely things PTFE and things like that I would imagine and probably white lithium But it works very well. I usually just put about five spots around the outside, run that ring on there, work it backwards and forwards. That feels good, nice and smooth. And I'm going to take that off while I get this in the mount. What I've got to achieve is I've got to align the fork here with this moving lever here and this post here has to slide in this slot here so I'll put a bit of molybdenum paste on the inside of that slot where that post's got to run and a quick wipe into the fork for good measure so that's all. Now I've got to get these to line up together all at the same time, which is only a little bit entertaining. Look at the relationship of those two parts. This is why I'm doing this with the helical off, off from the front so I can see what I'm doing. If I can pick up the I want to pick up the diaphragm first, if I can get that, that in, then I can rotate the lens and drop that into place. That's dropped into place, but I've missed my diaphragm fork, so I've got to uh, have another go at that. It's over here. That's good. That's in. I'll rotate this and get the other piece in. 
I think I can. Okay, so I've got that correctly arranged. Diaphragm opens. The lens is sitting back in the mount, which tells me that it's dropped into place correctly. I can put the outer part of the helical in place. Make sure my focus scale ring is round at the infinity position. Just bring that up a little bit more so the lens isn't ridiculously far back in the tube. And our three screws and washers that held all this together can go in. Then this has got to go on the camera and I can adjust the position of the focus scale ring relative to the outer helical which adjusts the focus of the lens and because it's going on a reflex camera and because I've already ascertained that the image at the screen and the image at the focal plane both agree I can you just simply use the viewfinder I don't need to focus this at the film plane since the viewfinder matches the image at the film plane Right, check that that moves through the range. Doesn't seem to go all the way around to the 0.9, so I'm obviously a little bit off there. Let's just slacken those screws off. Move that round there. Tighten them again. Check that it moves through the range. It does, okay. So that, I can now go on the camera body and I can check my focus. Well, a quick look through there tells me that it's not reaching infinity. So I need to... Where are we? need to take that ring around a bit further, which will drop the lens further back into the mount and check that again. And that is almost, but not quite. You need to take your time at this. A little bit of toing and froing is quite normal. You need the, the focus to be reasonably accurate. With a reflex camera, that's just a bit beyond infinity at the moment. With a reflex camera, what you're interested in is making sure that the lens will focus to infinity. Back that up a bit. Let's try it there. Uh, you can make marks. You can make an alignment mark across here between the two surfaces so that you've got a reference so you know which way you're moving from there and how far you've moved from the, the place you've set it to. That, that's good. That's spot on there. It's one of the, like most tasks, it's one of those things that you get better with, with practice. I'll just clean this front surface of the lens. It's a little bit dusty and grimy. As I clean this, I'm rotating the cotton bud to keep presenting a clean surface to the lens. And that's important so that just on the off chance you've picked up a uh, tiny grit particle that you're not rubbing it into the glass. Now I'll just clean there front name ring 
um, hood mounting ring gets a bit oily that's quite dirty that's unusual get that clean that goes on it goes on one way it's got a little tab on it which lines up the little slot at the top of the lens there and that's to ensure that when you put the lens hood on there that it actually sits correctly aligned and that it's not running off at some odd angle because the lens hood was rectangular not round there we go that's the position it goes in and I'll just clean the retainer, the conical piece in the middle that holds all this in place likewise that's a bit grimy and oily looking and get that started I'll just use a toothpick to run that down There's a mark at this point, like somebody had a tool in there, and they, they have. There's a pointed tools being used here, and I can see a line where it's slipped. Just checking that moves freely. It does. Friction tool on that rubber, that conical section. Just twist that. That's nice and tight. And that lens probably saw none of that did you? you probably didn't that lens is now ready to go I've used a friction tool to make sure that that conical section the retainer is down tight focus is nice and smooth depth of field pointers move correctly come together in the middle symmetrically about the centre get out to the ends of there travel symmetrically the diaphragm smooth, snappy in its action exactly as it should be that lens is now fit for further service so thanks for watching I'm pleased to see the back of this that's the Reflex S and two standard lenses there may be a few jumps and cuts in the video because some tasks I had to waste an awful lot of time doing them and they should have been very simple. And I'm just cutting some of that rubbish out because uh, it would be far too boring to watch.